Those of you who have seen my past videos have most likely watched the one from uh, 15 months ago where I put a brass bristled brush onto my Ender 3 so that I could wipe the nozzle clean on every layer change uh, when I'm printing PETG. We all know how uh, much of a pain in the butt printing PETG is with the ooze, the dribble that builds up on the nozzle. And it's so funny because the number one criticism, and it's so vitriolic, like there's so much anger behind this criticism for me. Uh, and it was like, you're gonna destroy your nozzle. Well, you guys, the nozzle is brass and the brush is brass. So that's like the same. So yeah, if you get a lot of friction on your hands, this hand and this hand are the same hardness, then you build up heat and it's the heat that damages your hand, but really, they don't really bother each other. You can get galling if you have uh, real hard friction um, on metal, like aluminum tends to gall really badly, but just lightly brushing some bristles across the brass is not gonna wear out your brass nozzle. So if the brass bristles can reach up to the aluminum heat block, then yeah, that could potentially, over a long period of time, score some lines in the heat block, but you guys, it's gonna be a lot of printing until you notice any like lasting damage. Recently, I did a project, you can go watch the video here, where uh, I was printing for like 20 hours straight and I was doing multiple versions, many iterations, printing with PETG, so I really was encountering this problem of dribble with PETG printing, and I needed to add uh, a brush to clean the nozzle to my Mingda D4, which is what you see right here behind me. And once again, it functioned fantastically. So I thought I would make this video for you guys just to revisit the subject and provide more information and sort of more insight than I provided last time. So let's get into it. This is some carbon fiber impregnated PETG and I was printing 20 hour long prints with it and PETG when it gets wet you know things get wet just they soak moisture out of the air and when this filament gets wet it dribbles a lot which can lead to really big problems with printing layer shifts or at least you're going to get some nasty you know like boogers or, or, or ooze you know globules stuck to your outside of your print and I just wanted to remove that possibility um, without having to dry my, my filament. Now even if you dry your filament, you can still get those. So the ideal solution would be dry filament, really good um, you know, slicer setup. So just get that file dialed in as perfectly as you can and use the brush here. So you can see here on the, on the hot end, I installed one of these steel, or you know, yeah, it's pretty much high strength, high carbon steel nozzle for printing the abrasive carbon fiber filament. And I didn't tighten it down tight enough and I leaked a bunch of filament out of the top of the hot block there, and that kind of sat there for 20 hours kind of cooking, and that's what this white stain on my, on my hot end is anyway. So yeah, user error there, but even with that user error, I still got a perfect print out of this thing because of the brush. So this is just a tremendously useful bit of, of an upgrade. Yeah, I mean, I'm really happy with it, but it's not perfect. So if I pop this brush out, first of all, I need to kind of figure out a way to make this able to clamp a little bit better. But you can see, this is after I've cleaned it for you know many minutes here. I probably spent 10 minutes trying to clean all the little bits and pieces of plastic out of those bristles, and they just won't fully all come out. Also, you can see there's like a groove worn into it. And I've um, also tried to straighten that groove out. So the groove was, was even more pronounced before I, I did my little maintenance on it. So... Um, yeah, it's got its issues. Before, when I was making that project, I was using this arm here, which mounted the brush. It was more mounted that direction. So I wasn't able to fully get it to where the hot end would sweep over it. See, the nozzle goes all the way over it now to the far side and then back. So I wasn't able to go quite that far with the travel, um, but I can now, I can do that now. So I've printed up this new arm. You can see it no longer mounts in, on two screw holes, it just sort of wraps around this here and it all works. So really great geometry. This is gonna go on the Mingda D2 as well. And so the Mingda D4 and D2, no modifications needed. They just have enough travel to accommodate a brush. Looking over here at the Mingda Rock 3, there's not enough travel off the side of the bed 
to accommodate uh, one of those brass bristled brushes. So what I've moved on to trying is this silicone wiper instead. And uh, the idea there was that it can't clog up with all the uh, extra filament. And also, you know, silicone, because it's skinnier, I can, I can get it to fit here off the side of this printer, but this solution is not gonna work. Now I might be able to get this to function correctly if I had more travel off the side of the bed here so that I could put more of these wiper blades in sequence and wiping over multiple blades potentially could solve my problem, but uh, it's never gonna be perfect and I'll show you why. So here's some of that wet PETG carbon fiber filament and I'm gonna feed it through the hot nozzle until it's spitting out and we're just gonna yank it off and you're gonna see the ooze, dribble, whatever you wanna call it, it's gonna just keep on coming. You see that? It just keeps on spitting out. And part of that is because I didn't retract, but the major reason for this is because the moisture in the filament is boiling inside the, the melt zone and that's constantly putting pressure on the melt zone to push more and more of this. So you can see it just, it just keeps coming. As you're doing travel moves between you know, layers and whatnot, it's just gonna keep leaking this out. And let me show you guys what happens. Okay, so coming over to clean the nozzle, what you can see is happening is it's just constantly getting pushed to that left side of the nozzle there as you clean, as I'm wiping. So what I'm really doing is all that buildup, instead of dropping off the end of the nozzle, it's all getting built up now on the left-hand side. As you hit the walls of your print as you're going along, it's gonna be pushing this dribble, this ooze, up onto the nozzle in this exact same way. So the silicone here is not doing a very good job of wiping off the excess. And if I grab that with pliers here, look at that giant glob of crap. Imagine if that got caught on your printer, hardened, and then your nozzle came around and caught on this. What it would do is cause a layer skip. So this is a really big issue. And the first solution is to keep your filament dry but the second solution is a better wiper. For comparison, here on the Mingda D4 Pro, we've got the brass bristled brush, and we're gonna spray it with some silicone lubricant here just to, um, to try to keep the, um, the filament from sticking to the bristles. So yeah, I need to give it the silicone treatment like every few hours. We can watch it start to dribble out, and we can start cleaning it on the brush. And you can see there's no filament. So the brass bristle brush is like a consumable item. It wears out. You'll probably need to replace it after, I don't know, a month or so, but it does the job much better than the silicone wiper I've got over here. Speaking of which, let me show you guys how I made that. I have this Mark 9 MK9 sized silicone boot. You can see a similar one here on the printer. And I'm gonna be cutting this up to use it as the wiper, and I think it's gonna perform quite well. The high temperature silicone won't melt with the, uh, with the nozzle temperatures, so yeah. So then I'm just gonna give a little bit of downward pressure there as I stab the, uh, the sharpened piece of filament through there. And then you can see what I've done here is the front wipe is a little bit taller than the nozzle, so it wipes the bottom of the nozzle. And the second wipe here, the one that's closer to us at the moment, has this V cut in it, so it wipes the side of the nozzle higher up the nozzle. And the idea there is to get sort of a dual stage. Uh, we get a really clean wipe off the bottom, which also kind of gets the front and the back side of the nozzle. And then these really wipe along the sides quite well. So that's the best technique that I've come up with you guys. Use a brass bristled brush and clean the bristles, straighten out the bristles every few hours of printing. Just go in there and when you're checking up on the printer, that's what you do. Now, um, this idea to put a brass bristled brush to clean your nozzle is not originally my idea. I got the idea from the E3D tool changer, but the slight tweak to it that I did was uh, add it to one of these um, Mingda, or I'm sorry, one of these Mendel style printers because they can over travel. Now, these can only over travel with this 2020 bar as the 
motion for the X gantry because the bar sits in front. You can see right there. So there's the ability for those wheels to travel in front of the vertical uh, frame piece here. So this is not an option for um, like a Prusa, not an option on a Prusa. I've got my Prusa clone, that G-Tech uh, i3 Pro B, and I couldn't put this on there. I did see Chris from Chris's basement, and it looks like he might have something like this mounted on the side of his Prusa. Here on Chris's latest video about uh, Z-axis, uh, you know, techniques for all of his different printers, he shows this bit of geometry off the side of his Prusa. This is really interesting, you guys. This blue pin, I think, activates this lever arm, the purple lever arm, which pushes the brush into uh, the print space and allows you to clean the nozzle. Now, unfortunately, that would collide with, uh, if you were printing to the edge of the bed, it would collide. And also, uh, you can't print for maybe the first 40 layers, something like that, the first half inch, it looks like that's, that's about a half inch tall. So if that is what I think it is, um, it might, move the brush forward to backward, which would be pretty clever. Um, in fact, that's that's super clever and I love that idea. So kudos to Chris for putting this on his printer. I can't find any information on it. I did search for like five or 10 minutes and uh, he doesn't have a video and I don't know, maybe it's on Thingiverse. I didn't look on Thingiverse, but it's a great idea. So yeah, you guys do this to your printers, seriously. And of course, I've just shown you here that you really do need the full, like you need a good inch of travel over there, right? At least like three quarters of an inch so call it, I don't know, a centimeter and a half of, of travel, at least, over the, um, over the edge of the bed to really get it to work properly. And yeah, so that's, that's what we're stuck with. And ideally, we'd have the ability to move the brush relative to the nozzle, not just in the x-axis, but also in the y-axis. So we could do like some sort of a circular cleaning motion or something like that, but because the bed here is what controls the y-axis movement it's not possible to it, it's not I mean, anything's possible you'd have to have its own servo or some crazy linkage attaching it to the bed somehow it's just it's a it's a it's kind of a pain and this works as long as you come around and do your maintenance uh, whenever you check up on your printer yeah okay so the last thing to talk about is drama <laughs> drama this is so funny drama so that's just a buzzword used by all of my detractors uh, like I just said you cannot fit an actual brush cleaning thing on a Prusa you just can't do it so this is not an upgrade that you can even put on a Prusa because you don't have that extra travel off the side of the bed so I was on their forums because I wanted to figure out what Chris from Chris's basement had done to his printer um, see if there's anybody else who, who maybe put that geometry on their printer. And I found this from a little more than a year ago. And this, this, this thread got started when Gregory here, um, referenced this Hackaday article and the Hackaday article was referencing my video. And I'm extremely thankful to Hackaday for featuring me. So thank you very much Hackaday for doing this. If you look here at the, uh, at the Prusa forum, you'll see this guy Muppet Labs and he is an illustrious member. Ooh, so that means that he's deep in the Prusa group. Like he is, he is super embedded and he's trying to be political about it and not too strong worded. But he basically says, go read this form, but he basically says, um, they're not going to put this functionality on a printer, on a Prusa. Great as it is, they're not going to put it on the Prusa because I might claim that they copied me. That hasn't stopped Prusa ever in the past before. Every single feature, every single feature on a Prusa was copied from somebody else. They have not come up with one single innovation themselves, not one, okay? I've come up with innovations that are more like, a, more of a leap, more of an advancement, and I'm not even getting paid for this like the Prusa engineers who are all day every day paid to develop 3D printers, okay? Or Prusa himself, who I still maintain is the primary developer of the Prusa FDM printer. So, you know, Prusa's got zero innovation and all this hype, which is dying down, thankfully, in, in, in these, you know, last year or so, all the hype is dying down. Everybody sees through the BS of their marketing efforts that Prusa is not this great savior of 3D printing. I had, oh my God, you guys, I had somebody leave a comment not like a month or two ago that said, Prusa invented 3D printing. 
can you believe it? He said, Prusa invented 3D printing. These guys are insane. And where do they get this narrative? It's fed to them by this misinformation campaign from Prusa. Prusa's success is entirely from their copying of other people's innovations and then primarily this um, ridiculous marketing campaign that makes everybody think they're the greatest printer ever. They're not. In fact, fundamentally, the Prusa printer is very flawed, but they've spent a lot of time tuning it and tweaking it. So it's a very polished turd. It's the most polished turd that I've ever seen. Anyway, so Muppet Labs here wants to say that um, they won't put this brass bristled cleaning brush on a Prusa because uh, I'm going to claim that they copied them. That's the only reason. It's not. They won't put it on a Prusa because it won't fit because there's not enough room off the side of the bed. How was your nap, kiddo? Good. Yeah? I, I slept very good, but I woke up a few times. But then I feel like back to sleep. Uh, 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 Mom's going to give me a chocolate cone. Well, Mama's going to give you a chocolate cone. Awesome. Well, you better go get that. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, I'm not the reason that Prusa doesn't have this feature. Uh, copying, the fear of, of being called out for copying has never stopped them in the past. It's because they physically can't fit this on the frame. And it's a great idea. So all of you guys with Chinese printers that can fit this, uh, I recommend it. It's definitely uh, advantageous. And if you own a Prusa, I'm sorry that you own the inferior hardware and you can't implement this um, technique on your printer. Maybe you can talk to Chris Riley, convince him to make a video about that really clever bit of geometry that it looks like he's got working on his printer. Uh, maybe it doesn't work. Maybe that's why he hasn't made a video about it. I don't know. Um, the fact of the matter is that Prusa slanders me all over the internet. If you Google my name, you're going to find all kinds of questions about my character and that kind of stuff. Look at here they are in their forum. Glad to see I'm not the only one that feels that way about the DPT guy. They, they make it look like everybody's like, yeah, that guy's a chode. Yeah, I can't stand that guy. They put all of these... And, and they're real vague, right? And, and they just want to build a consensus on this like vague feeling of we don't like DPT. So that's, and they, it, it works. It's done a lot of damage to my channel. But one of the things that they're continuing to do, and I think that a lot of these comments here on the Hackaday um, post here are actually, you know, Prusa agents. And they they can't really get away with, with disparaging me about this video on the Hackaday site because uh, I said nothing but just pure like engineering about this technique. So it, it, I really didn't open the box or open the, the, the conversation to discussions about my person. And so instead, because they can't implement this brush on a Prusa because it doesn't fit there, um, they have to tear down the functionality. It's a great functionality, but they just, they're gonna lose some esteem for their printer by not having this feature and not being able to fit this feature on their printer. So they have to attack the feature. It's a great print feature. So here we have Prusa, supposed to be the savior of 3D printing, the champion of open source in 3D printing. And here his agents are killing an awesome feature that everybody with a Mendel style printer that has the room could be putting on there. If this gained widespread knowledge and everybody was like, yeah, that's a cool technique, we'd all be printing better, but Prusa doesn't want you to print better. They want you to believe that their printer is the best one on the internet. And it's just, it's not. Okay. So that being said, uh, there are some criticisms that are legitimate about the, uh, the, the nozzle the brush cleaning, you know, technique. First of all, uh, it wears that groove into it, sort of bends the, uh, the, the bristles out of the way after, you know, repeated use. So you got to go back there and straighten it out. It does kind of clog up or get a buildup of filament in the bristles. And those are two major problems, but there's one that I haven't talked about. And that's the fact that most slicers uh, only give you an option for specialized uh, scripts at each layer change. It would be great to be able to uh, do a specialized skip at every 10 layer changes or at every thousand lines of movement or something like that, just to not have to wipe the nozzle so frequently and uh, wear out the brush uh, quite as quickly. Speaking of the layer change script, which uh, wipes the nozzle, this is the best version of it that I've come up with. And it took quite a few iterations before I came up with this. It's really slimmed down. It's uh, it's bare bones and that's the way you want it. And it functions. Uh, the other versions um, tried to call up different G code functions and they, they didn't work as good. So going through it real quick, the G60 is a specialized command pretty much just for 
uh, things like this. And it's a great command there. By the way, this works with the RepRap firmware installed on a Duet control board. I don't know if this is gonna work in Marlin. I haven't tried it in Marlin, but G60 S1 stores the current location in the S1 memory spot. So I think there's all the way to S9, but you only need to use S1 here. Um, the G1 is a movement. You could also put a G0, G1, G0, basically the same thing. And I'm using this on the Mingda D4 Pro, which is the 430 millimeter size bed. So 435 gets me five millimeters over the side of the bed, more or less. And um, yeah, so I'm moving at a certain speed. I want to do it quickly. So I'm, I'm having it do at a feed rate of 6,000, which is a very reasonable feed rate for any Mendel printer. The, the, the D4 Pro is very large, so it has to move more slowly than most. So if you have a smaller printer, you can even move faster than the F6000. And then I'm doing a double wipe. So I'm going from 435 to 420, which is where the bed ends. And then I'm going back to 435. So that's a 15 millimeter wipe. And um, after that, the G1 command recalls the value that you stored with G60, and it takes you straight there. So then the M400 I found to be uh, kind of necessary because it might start uh, extruding filament before it reaches the G1 location. That is the script. It's the best one I've come up with. If you've got a better script, let me know. Hey, a big thank you to these guys my Patreon supporters, you guys are keeping the channel alive and I'm not exaggerating in the slightest. Uh, the bulk of um, resources, the ability to purchase things for the channel and the ability for me to spend the time to make these videos is only happening because of these awesome guys. So thank you very, very much. And that's gonna do it for this video. Thank you all so much for watching. See you next time, bye.